had a few more days for working down here. You know my work will be done. Well, hey, a few more days for working down here. You know my work will be done. I said a few more days for working down here. You know my work will be done. Then I'm going to sit down. I know you've been striding, 
such a long, 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 long time. You're like a so frustrated. You can't hardly find a peace of mind. Don't let Satan stop you. Make your mind up and go on through. For if you keep the faith, God has a dollar life waiting for you. Don't you? Don't you give up? 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 This rain, this rain. Don't you give up? This rain. I know it's hard, man, to hide your journey for so long. God will give you courage to carry on. Don't worry about men must to you. Walk up promising he will do. And man's the worst of passion away for God. And do to Ruth and I'm waiting for you. Don't you? Don't you give up? 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 This rain, this rain. Don't you give up? This rain. Let me say that again. I know you've been striving such a long, 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 long time. Your life is so frustrating. You can't hardly find a peace of mind. Don't let Satan stop you. Make your mind up and go on through. For if you keep the faith, God has eternal life waiting for you. Don't you? Don't you? Don't you give up? 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 This rain, this rain. Don't you give up? This rain. I know it's hard, man, to hide your journey for so long. Give your courage to carry on. Don't worry about men, men must do it. Yeah. Walk up, promise he will do. And man's a worse a pass away for God. Had to do rules and I'm waiting for you. Don't you? Don't you give up? Don't you give up? Don't you? Don't you give up? Don't you give up? Don't you give up? This rain, this rain. Don't you give up? This way, oh, don't you? Don't you? Don't give up? I'm begging you. Don't you? Don't give up? Don't you give up? After maybe high. Don't you? Don't give up? Don't you give up? After maybe low. Don't you give up? Keep your faith in Jesus. Don't you give up? Don't you give up? God will make a way. Don't you a way out of Don't you give up? I come in the morning. Don't you hear me right now? Don't you give up? I come in the evening. Don't you God will be right now? Don't you give up? If you listen, you what your friends say. Don't you give up? Don't you give up? 
Don't you give up? I beg you, don't you don't give up? Don't you give up? I let it be high. Don't you give up? Don't you give up? I let it be low. Don't you don't give up? Don't you give up? I let it be high. Don't you don't give up? Don't you give up? Keep your faith in Jesus. Don't you love your King of Faith? Don't you give up? God will make a way. Don't you a way out of no way? Come on, don't you give up this race. Whatever you do, don't you give up. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon us. Make us, mold us, Lord, hold us and control us. God, we're your instrument. So we ask that you be in the midst of this worship experience. Whatever you do, God, don't do it without us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord? Just one more. Come on, you didn't say it like you mean it. I said, anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord? Just one more. <laughs> he didn't have to let you live, but I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Just one more time. Out of all the stuff I've been through this week, I'm just happy to be in God's house to give him praise, honor, and tribulation come on let's get ready to pray let's let's get one of them them good prayer hymns we get, we got to go way back because i feel my baptocostal coming in on me just simply says sweet holy spirit sweet heavenly dove stay right here with us come on y'all feeling us feeling us with time we heart in love without a doubt without a doubt we know that we have been revived when we you got to call them come on sweet holy spirit sweet holy spirit sweet heavenly dove stay right here with us filling us with your love and for these blessings we live our without a doubt without a doubt we know that we have been revived when we anybody ready to call it come on sweet Sweet, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here, feeling love, and for Without a doubt, we have been revived when we shall. Come on, if you want to be revived when you leave this place, come on, no music. Come on, sweet, holy. Come on, pick up those mics. Come on, come on. Sweet, heavenly. Stay right here. Feeling us, feeling us with your love, and for, and for we live 
our hearts Without a doubt Without a doubt We've been revived When we shall Listen, revival is not for the sinner. Revival is for us saints. And when you come to church, you ought to leave here revived. You ought to leave here feeling better than when you came. Okay, y'all ain't talking to me. When you go to the gas station, you go for a fill up. And this is the place where God wants to fill you up. And the only way you're going to get filled up is you got to have that sweet Holy Spirit. That sweet heavenly dove. So I want y'all, I know you got your mask on, but I need y'all to help me set the atmosphere up in here, this place. Y'all ready? From the top. Oh, 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 oh. sweet, sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet, sweet heavenly dove stay right here with us filling us with your love and for the blessings we live our heart without a doubt without a doubt we know that we have been revived when we live oh, 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 sweet, 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 stay right here, filling us, filling us. We lift our heart Without a doubt We have been revived When we shall God our Father How we love to call you our Father we just thank you for that sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We thank you for the heavenly dove thank you, Lord. Thank you. that represents the anointing that fall upon us. Before we ask you for anything, can we just tell you thank you? Thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Thank you for last night lying down. And then God, right early this morning, you touched us with a finger of divine love. And we had church on our mind. We just thank you that even though it's raining on the outside, the S-O-N is shining on the inside. And we thank you for your darling son, Jesus, that rest and rule in our hearts. God, we thank you that when we came to church, we had church on our mind. We didn't come for no shape, form, or fashion. We didn't come for no fashion show. We came to get an audience with you. Because, God, we don't know what somebody is standing in the need of. We don't know what report somebody got from the doctor. We don't know what somebody's relationship or family ship is going through. But all we know is that we cast our cares upon you. Because you care for us. Your word says if we just cast, if we throw everything to your feet and just leave it there, everything will be all right. So God, this morning we put whatever is on our hearts, whatever is on our mind, we're going to put it at the altar and leave it there. We're going to put it at your feet and leave it there. And then we're going to leave worshiping and thanking you that we are able to put it at your feet. So God, if those who are going through sickness right now we put it at your feet because your word says by your stripes we are healed your word says God that, that this sickness is not unto death when you told Mary and Martha about Lazarus all sickness is not unto death but that the father may get the glory so we're casting sickness at your feet 
whether it's cancer, whether it's high blood pressure, whether it's, 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 it's whatever it is, we're putting it at your feet. And if we leave it at your feet, you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. We're putting it at your feet. Because you're able to heal, deliver, and to set free. We're putting financial issues at your feet. Because your word says, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the lender and not the bar. I'm blessed going in and blessed going out. I'm putting it at your feet. For your word says that you that you wish that all men shall prosper, that their souls may prosper, and we may gain wealth. I'm putting relationships at your feet. Some husband and wife may not be on the same page. Some boyfriend and girlfriend may not be at the same page. But whatever it is, I'm putting it at your feet. Because your word says, whom the son has joined together, let no man put asunder. I'm putting children at your feet. You told us to train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart. You told us to beat out the foolishness of children. And that when they get older, they will return to your word. We're putting it at your feet. They may be going through a season of disobedience, a season of foolishness. But we're putting it at your feet. And when we put it at your feet, you're able to bring that child back. God, I ain't got to send you nowhere because you're everywhere at the same time. But we got members in the hospital. And we're putting them at your feet. Because when we put them at your feet, you're able to heal them right now. When we put them at your feet, you're able to just move in the up and down the hospital walls and nobody knows that you're there. You're able to sit there when the doctor is going through surgery. You're able to guide the doctor hand. You're able to calm fevers. You're able to heal bodies. We're putting it at your feet. You got members in the nursing home who sometimes feel like they're all by themselves. But your word says there is a friend that sticketh closer than the brother. Your word says when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. We're putting them at your feet. And God, we even got members behind prison wall. Putting them at your feet. Because you're a God of another chance. Because you keep giving us chances after chances after chances. So we're putting them at your feet. Give them another chance. Give them a clean heart. Renewing them the right spirit. We're putting them at your feet. But all this morning, I'm putting Mount Hermon at your feet. Ain't nothing I can do without you guiding. Ain't nothing I can do without you leading. So I'm putting them at your feet. Because you're the chief cornerstone whom the builders rejected. But yet you died for the church. I'm putting them at your feet. And then lastly, I'm putting myself at your feet. Lead me, guide me along the way. And then Lord, when I shall go on the last mile of the race, And I shall rest at the close of the day when I've gone the last mile of the way. Would you own us? Would you crown us? And your name shall get the praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Now you got to celebrate it. Come on, sweet Holy Spirit. Come on. Feeling us, we live our heart without a doubt.
my share of heartaches, but I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Trouble, I see my share of troubles, but I'm still here. Taking my lumps and bruises, but I'm still here. Thank you, Lord. Loneliness, I had my share of loneliness, but I'm still here. Through it all, through it all, I made it through another day journey. Oh, Lord, God kept me here. I made it, yeah. I made it through. Made it through. Another day's journey. Oh, Lord. God kept me here. This. Light on. Many times I've been light on. But I'm still here. Burdens, I had to bear so many burdens, but I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Dark days, I see my share of dark days, but I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Loneliness, I had my share of loneliness, but I'm still here. Through it all, through it all, I made it through another day's journey. Oh Lord, God kept me here. I made it, yeah, made it through. I made it. Oh Lord, another day's journey. God kept me here. I made it, yeah. I made it. Made it through another day's journey. One more day, y'all. God kept me here. Let me tell you what it was, y'all. By the grace of God, I'm still here today. He was always there, no matter what came my way. The very present in a time of need, standing right there. Just to see about me, I made it, made it through, through another day's journey. Oh Lord, God kept me here. I made it, yeah, made it through. I made it through, oh Lord, another day's journey. Sometimes I had to talk to God, God kept me here all night long. I made it, made it through. Yes, I made it. Yes, God. I'm still here. I made it. Yeah, I made it. Yeah, yes, I made it. I'm still here. Sometimes I had to lay awake all night long. I made it. Thousand and turn it, y'all. Yes, I made it. But he kept it. his arm around me. I'm still here. I made it through another yes, day's journey. God did. Thank you, Jesus.
redeemed. redeemed. Said I'm both. Born with a bride. A bride. Jesus. Jesus. And changed my whole life. And if anybody.
some redeemed folks up in here the Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord say so tell them tell them that I am redeemed come on give the Lord a hand to clap of praise in this place if you know you're redeemed you ought to let the world know that you are you are redeemed. Amen. I, let me apologize and say happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day to you. 
people, whether you are a biological father, spiritual father, adopted father, first time fathers, happy Father's Day to you. Amen. Let me do this. Amen. Y'all know those of you who've been who grew up in West Charlotte know that when it rains, your internet and everything don't work over here, and that's what we having some issues with. Amen. And so you know that uh, all y'all cousins and them keep blowing up my phone, talking about they can't see the church and all that good stuff. You, you know how that go. Amen. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to focus on this sermon that God gave me this morning, and and everybody keep. Amen. So no way I won't get it right. But listen, today is a bittersweet moment because it is uh, Earl E.J. Johnson's last Sunday here. Very bittersweet moment. So what we're going to do, we're going to bless him at the end of the service. I know some of you uh, brought cards and all that good stuff. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a regular, our regular offering over here. And then one, amen, we a couple of deacons short, amen. <laughs> then we're going to get somebody, uh, Brother Henry Goss, going to, act like a deacon today amen amen and he's gonna hold a uh bucket that you can bless uh earl with today um you don't do what i do you just do what the lord tell you to do the bible says you give as the lord has prospered in your heart amen and he's going back to florida where he's from two hours away from his family amen so god is good and we, i'm just grateful for the time that he has spent here Amen. I said I'm grateful for the time that he has spent here. Listen, when he came, uh, he came along with uh, Brother Benny, and then during that transition, he said, I don't know what's going on. I just want to learn how to play gospel music. Amen. He said, I'm, I'm not here for the money. I don't, I don't even want the money. I just want to learn how to play gospel music. And I simply said, that's not fair for him to drive from Columbus and not get something. Come on, the gas has went up and went down. And so that's, that's what he did. He didn't want anything. He just wanted to learn how to play gospel music. And so him and Wendell partnered together along with Corey Carl and, and now a little late and all of them learning how to play the drums. Amen. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to bless him starting off with $100 and you do what the Lord has prosper in your heart. Um, so before he go, Wendell, y'all just do a, a duet of amazing grace with the bass, the organ, and the drums. Amen? Amen.
amazing grace. God, amazing grace. He was God, God. of God said amen amen I thought I was going to preach calling my daddy told you a few weeks ago that <clears throat> when we were out cutting grass and the lawnmower got to acting up and Warren said let me call my daddy and the Lord put that in my spirit to preach let me call my daddy when Jesus was on the cross where he says my father my father why hast thou forsaken me but I've been through some things this week that God has arrested me so there is a word found in the book of Psalms Psalms number 37 beginning at verse number 23 Psalms 37 beginning at verse number 23 sir we would see Jesus. Sir, we would see Jesus. None of me but all of you. We would see Jesus. Do me a favor. Go ahead and uh, go on Noel's page and hit that share button or on the church page and hit that share button there. Uh, our viewers and worshipers should see today's sermon. Psalms 37 verses 23 through 25 says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his ways though he fall he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholdeth him with his hands I have been young and now I am old Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Y'all see that right here? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I've been young. And now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. And I want to talk about order my steps in your word. Order my steps in your word. Beloved, this week has been crazy for me because I've been waking up crazy times of the night sleeping during the day because God has arrested me he said Johnson you keep telling everybody else to stir up their gift but it's now time for you to stir up your gift and just like young Jeremiah if you know Jeremiah, he was called at a young age. In his mother's womb, it was something different and strange about Jeremiah. 
And as I looked at the life of Jeremiah, as Pastor Calhoun talked about it on Wednesday on the prayer call, I'm reading this book entitled 15 Things That Seminary Did Not Teach Me. And I shared it with you on Bible study how you ought to have some friends that you can count on. Amen. Mimi, you could take me one notch down on the floor. You ought to have some friends that you could count on. You ought to have five biblical characters, and then you ought to have five friends that's in the same occupation as you, and then five friends who are not in the same occupation as you. And I find myself in the Bible as Jeremiah and David. Mostly I find myself as Jeremiah because just like God had wrestled with Jeremiah and said, Jeremiah, how I feel about Israel is how your life is going to be. And for 21 years, I've been trying to figure out who Lamar is. You ain't got to talk to me if you don't want to. I, I've been trying to figure out because God, you, you called me from a child. You called me to preach your word. You called me to do this. But yet, people don't understand the calling that you have on me. You ain't got to talk to me if you don't want to because look, look, look what he says. He says, he says, this is David. This is David writing this 37th number of song. He's talking to his son. He's getting his son ready to take over the throne. He's letting his son know that, look, God would not let me build the temple, but God is going to let you build the temple, and there's some things that you got to know in order to build this temple. I wish I had somebody who knew the Bible. Look, look, the whole theme of Psalms number 37 is trust in the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. I, I, I need to be honest with y'all today. I trust God, but I got a problem with waiting. I said, I trust God with what he's going to do, when he's going to do, but that part right there that says patiently wait on him to act, I struggle with because I, I'm like some of y'all I'm, I'm like some of y'all if I put something in the microwave I want it done just like that if I put something in the oven I'm ready to eat I need God to help me to trust him patiently this psalm is vividly contrasts the wicked person versus the upright you, 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 you trying to figure out where I'm going and this whole Psalms number 37 David is talking to Solomon by telling him don't you trip because the wicked are prospering faster than you Ooh, y'all didn't come to have no church I said don't you trip when it seemed like everybody got everything going for them seemed like the grass is greener on the other side I need to tell you the grass is not always greener sometimes it's artificial turf and people got a nice way of faking the funk like they all that in the bag of gym but if you follow them home they just as miserable as you are but if you learn how to trust God learn how to wait on God he will help you that, that it was that great song hip hop group Salt and Pepper along with In Vogue put out a song entitled What a Man What a Man What a Mighty Good Man gotta say it again now What a Man What a Man What a Mighty Good Man Notice what they said. I want to take a minute or two and give much respect due to the man that made a difference in my world. And though most men are, yeah, he flows on the down low because I never heard him with any other girl. What a man. What a man. What a mighty good man. See, I, I know what y'all trying to figure out. Right here in verse number 23. It says the steps of a good man. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. Are uh, order by God. Huh. Verse number one tells us we should never envy the wicked, even though some may be extremely popular or excessively rich. No matter how much they have it, it will fade away like grass. But if God has ordered your steps, you're going to live differently than those who are wicked. And I'm trying to tell somebody, you got to be like the pastor and learn how.
how to wait patiently on God to open doors for you wait patiently on God to do what he said he's going to do in your life you got to learn how to say God order my steps I, I, I know you, you, you're saying your biological clock is ticking I know that you're saying you're too old for this but if God order your steps there's nothing to do with age come here Sarah is there anything too hard for God when God is the one directing your path when God is the one ordering your steps you don't have nothing to worry about Ah, look what he says he says what the unbelievers get may last a lifetime if he's lucky but what you get from following God will last forever can I say that one more time it may seem like your neighbor or slotty daddy and everybody got everything and you struggling but it's only going to last a little while but what God has for you can't nobody take from you what God has from you it, you may have to work hard to get it but I tell you when you work hard to get it it's worth it have you ever noticed that when you buy your children's shoes they just treat it any old type of way but when they go buy their stuff they, they take the toothbrush out and they scrub their shoes ain't nobody talking to me so, so you, you remember I don't know how you feel about it but, but, but when I was growing up I had a, a raggedy van and I took care of that raggedy van I never took the van through the car wash I always hand washed the van and they saw how I hand washed that raggedy van that when I got my next car I did the same thing when I got my next car I did the same thing when people People are watching you to see how you handle what God has given you and when you learn how to handle what God has given you then God is going to give you some more ain't nobody talking to me when you learn how to take care of that apartment God got a bigger house waiting on you when you learn how to take care of what you got God got something better for you but you got to say God I ain't jealous of nobody but order my steps in your way Uh, now when I when I was I was tossing and turning this morning I, I, I labeled this sermon a good man but as I was sitting in, the, in, 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 in my chair God says order my steps in your words so my point may sound like I'm talking to the men because it's Father's Day but listen point number one a good man trusts in the Lord I, I'm trying to help somebody a good man learns how to trust and the Lord David calls us to take delight in the Lord and to commit everything we have to God you missed that I said commit everything that you have to God the clothes I got they ain't mine they belong to God the robes I wear ain't mine they belong to God and when you commit everything to God God got a way of preserving what you got ain't nobody talking to me hold on Can I help y'all? Uh, Demetrius, it took me exactly 11 years to wear this robe that I got on. Th this robe came from Jerusalem. It's really a tunic what the men wore in biblical day. It actually went all the way down to my feet but I had Sister Leatrice hem it up for me. Got another one just like it. This is what they wore in biblical days. Now, listen to what I said. This was the late Dr. S.L. Robeson's robe. When he died in 2010, his wife, Mother Holly, gave me half of his robe. And so I had to go get all of them altered. And this one stayed in my closet in Hoover and Pelham and now in the valley. So I went to Tilly's. I said, look, Marcus, I need you to hook it up. He said, Rev, ain't nothing wrong with this robe. This robe has been preserved. It's nice. I said, I need you to steam it real good. He said, Reverend, it's clean. It's been preserved because he dedicated it to God. 
the reason why when you get grandmama couch and grandmama couch fall in on you because she had all that plastic in it and she wouldn't let nobody use it is because they didn't preserve it right but when you learn how to preserve something God will have it that you can use it over and over again when you commit everything that you got to God he'll preserve it I'm trying to help somebody. That's why That's why you still driving a 1979 bug bug. You still driving your 1971 deuce in the corner because when you had it, you said, God, look, if you help me keep it, God, if you help me do this, I give it back to you and you're still riding with your gangster lean. Huh? You still got some of them old clothes that you had from the 80s. Hold on, let me go Bible on you. The children of Israel. 40 years in the wilderness. Ain't nobody talking to me. And in actuality, for 40 years, they were walking around Mount Hermon in the life center going round and round and round. And yet, for 40 years, God didn't let their clothes get too big, too small, tear up. Because when God, when you commit everything that you have to God, he'll preserve it. And so David calls us to take delight in the Lord and to commit everything we have to God. What are we to commit? Johnson, I'm glad you asked. Our lives. That's the first thing you ought to commit to God. Lord, prepare me to be a living sanctuary, pure and holy, spot and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary unto you. The first thing you ought to commit to God is your life. God, I don't understand what you're doing with my life, but I'm committing it to you. God, I know some people are going to walk away from me. Some people are going to leave me alone, but I'm committing my life to you. Can, can, I, can I tell y'all the truth? My life is not my own. To him, I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. And that's why your life is not your own. Because if you really on God's side, it ain't about what you want, it's about what he wants. Ain't nobody talking to me. That, that's why people don't understand you sometimes because you don't even own, understand your own self. And sometimes you be like, what am I doing? And you just start walking by faith. Can I tell y'all something? It was faith that got me from Ypsilanti to Birmingham and it showed up was faith to get me from Birmingham to come to Lynette. Because my life is not my own. Not only are you to commit your life to him, but secondly, you got to commit your family. Your spouse. Them bad children. Can, can I tell y'all something? My grandmama told all of us, she said, I beat you because I love you. And love will tell me when to stop whooping on you. But if they whoop on you, they ain't going to stop till they get tired. And so when all her sons got 18 and then her grandchildren got 18, she said, I've done all I can do. I'm putting you in the hands of the Lord. I'm trying to talk to somebody. That, that's what happened to me. My grandmama said, I done done all I can do for you. But I'm putting you in the hands of the Lord. And there's no place I'd rather be than in the hands of the Lord because when I'm in his hands though you may try to throw some darts at me no weapon formed against me shall prosper though you try to start darts at me I will hide because I'm in his not only are you to put your family in his hands but thirdly put your job in his hands I know you got messy co-workers. I know you got folks that get on your nerves and sometimes you pull up to the job and say, oh Lord, this person here. But if you learn how to put your job in his hands. Can I, can I, can I tell y'all? 
maybe the reason God won't let you get a new job is because you're the Jesus that they need to see. Maybe you, God got you there to witness to somebody else. I, I know what you said. I, I, I keep applying for all these jobs. They keep telling me I'm overqualified or I ain't qualified enough. Maybe God says when you learn how to put this job that you got now in, your, in my hands, I will make it not a job, but I'll make it a career. Ain't nobody talking to me. That's why I love to preach every Sunday because it's not a job to me. It's something that God has birthed me to do. And since he's birthed me to do, you can wake me up at 2 o'clock in the morning and I say there is a word from the Lord. You can wake Wake me up at midnight and there's still a word from the Lord because this is something that I love. It ain't a job to some of y'all. He's a higher servant. No, baby, I ain't no higher servant. I've been sent here to shepherd the sheep. So you give your life, your families, your jobs, but here it is, your possessions. Huh. That house, that car, belong to God it ain't mine God God helped me to pay the note I wish I had talked to somebody up in here I know y'all get tired of me talking about Black Knight but I love Black Knight y'all I told y'all I, I was getting ready to buy Black Knight uh, Memorial Day weekend but my mama kept calling me and that's strange because I told y'all when I got here me and my mama talked seven times a day for seven minutes she called and said hey what you doing nothing alright click 60 seconds each phone call seven times a day that's how me and my mama talked but on Memorial Day my mama called me over 20 times and I said something ain't right my mama never calls me like this and I was getting ready to go sign the dotted line on Black Knight and I told the salesman I said look here man something ain't right I, I want this car I really want it but I'm gonna hold up on it and then guess what 11 days after my 28th birthdays my mama closed her eyes and died God was preparing me on Memorial Day that something was not right with my mama and I told y'all my mama never liked my dog I had a German Shepherd mixed with a St. Bernard that stood 3 feet 5 4 feet long y'all missing this thing my dog when it stood up on his hind legs Deacon Woody it stood taller than me it was a German Shepherd mixed with a St. But not look more like a Saint Bernard, but had the head of a German Shepherd. I mean, look more like a German Shepherd, but had the head of a Saint Bernard and slobbered like a Saint Bernard. And when my mama called me on June 18th and said, I was out there petting your dog, I said, Wait a minute, you don't even like my dog, and you out there petting my dog. And that was June 18th, that was at 8 o'clock in the morning at 1 p.m. June 18th. I had 41 missed phone calls for my family. Said, you need to get home your mama had a heart attack hold on wait a minute she was just out there painting, petting the dog she was just out there kept calling me and God was preparing me he said that's the reason why I wouldn't let you buy that car because you had to come home and handle some business and when I got back to Birmingham a month later I stayed in Michigan for a whole month got back to Birmingham a month later I said God if that car is still there I'm going to get the car in memory of my mama and when the salesman came out there there was somebody else test driving the car and they brought the car back and said man you go ahead and test drive it and I came back and they looked at me and I took out some oil and I started putting oil on the car ain't nobody talking to me I started putting some oil on the car I said God if this car is for me you gonna make sure it lasts you gonna make sure I ain't gonna have no problems with it and yet this day I'm still driving the car when I got the car I'm, I'm, I'm testifying this morning when I got that car it's out there right now it had 27,000 miles on it now I got 221,000 and we still rolling woo woo I'm trying to tell you when you put something in God's hand he'll preserve it and make it last you put everything in God's hand so a good man trusts in the Lord. Can I give you point number two? A good man knows that the Lord knows his situation. Uh, I got peace like a river because the Lord knows my situation. 
And when he knows your situation and you talk to him, he can be trusted. Since God can be trusted, we should not fret. And since God understands our situations, we should not fear. I wish I had somebody up in here. God knows what you're going through. Notice what I said in my prayer. We put it at the feet of Jesus. So what's above my head? is under his foot and if it's under his foot that means he got control okay y'all y'all looking at me uh, uh, so um, he was prepared for me to go live on Friday but I didn't I shocked him so um, Friday when their um, uh, me and Dobbs got into it got into it I pulled up Went in and said, Dobbs, you must be driving this trip. No, 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 it's, it's, the bus is clean on the inside but I don't like it his wife came up I said hey hey Daphne you ready for your family trip pastor quit playing quit playing no your husband in there your grandson in there and you in there y'all about to go to Birmingham cause I don't like this bus it's a joke y'all he, he, he prepared for it he prepared for it and so when you get in the bus you, you can't just, you got to ease. Y'all missing it. I'm trying to tell you, what's under God's foot, he's easing you to the next gear. The bus car starts off in gear three. So you got to ease your way to four, to five. Are y'all with me? And then when you get to 11 and 12, you can just ease on down the road. Maybe God got you in the third gear. Maybe God got some of y'all in fifth gear. But if you just let him ease, he'll get you to where he wants you to go. He knows your situation, but you got to trust him enough and let him ease you on down. And I'm trying to tell somebody, you can trust God. Because he know what you at in your finance He know what you at in your relationship He know what you at in your life But you got to trust that he's going to get you uh, I wish I had somebody to help me here He says look listen what he says He says he says, look 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 verse number 22 And I'm, I'm getting ready to hump this thing off For such as Be blessed of him Shall inherit the earth And they that be Cursed of him Shall be cut off he knows your situation. Whether he's going to give you some inheritance or he's going to cut you off. See, we always think it's the devil that cuts us off. But it ain't always the devil. God sometimes cuts you off because he knows you can't handle certain things. God will sometimes cut you off because he knows that it will change your whole attitude towards people where God wants us to be humble but if he give it to you you're going to walk around with your nose stuck up in the air like you better than everybody else God knows your situation last point and I'm going a good man knows the Lord blesses his people he blesses them first of all with provision of their daily needs. Look what it says. This is where I got it from. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his ways. But here it is. Though he falls. 
See, I, see, I, I knew y'all weren't going to say nothing. Because all of us fall. I'm going to look at, at myself. All of us fall. All of us come short. All of us got issues. All of us hurt people. See, y'all don't want to talk to me. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. So just because I fall don't mean I got to stay there. I'm trying to help somebody. I know you messed up in life. I know you made some bad choices. But though you fell, though you fell, you ain't got to stay there. He'll pick you up. I, we used to sing a song to the utmost. Jesus said, he'll pick you up. Turn you around. Hallelujah. To the utmost. Jesus saved. So when I fall, I'm not cast down. He reaches down and pick me back up. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me here. Look, it says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Can, can, I, can I give you? Huh. Listen, this is one of my favorite benedictions. Now unto him who is able to keep you. I hear somebody talking to me. From. Now unto him. He's able to keep you from. And baby, you gonna fall and I'm gonna fall, but thank God he's able to keep you from falling. And then what he's gonna do? He gonna dust me off and present me faultless. You looking at my faults, but he is able to present me to his daddy faultless. It's just like this. And, and don't act like you ain't never been to court. When I lived in Birmingham, and I would take 2059 to Atlanta, right there in front of Talladega, the, the, the race course, I always got pulled over. Huh. When I first got down here, I had a 2006 Nissan Altima, smoke gray, dark black windows with some rims so you know I'm going to get pulled over still had the Michigan license plate you, don't act like when y'all don't drive between Hoganville that's the narcotics so 2059 Birmingham wasn't speeding just had a nice car Pulled me over. Be before, before all these police things, still walked to the car with the hand. Said, said, oh, 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 your windows are too dark. No, my windows are not too dark. Had to come up with a reason to pull me over. So I had to go to some backwood area of Talladega to go to a, a courthouse. The judge came out with his jeans on, his Texas Ranger belt, white shirt with the Texas cowboy tie. He didn't come out with his robe, but he came out like that to get all his cases together. And so I'm standing there hearing him talk to everybody. And then when I get up before him, I went to the courthouse with a suit on, a tie, and my cross on my lapel. And I stood before him. He looked at my ticket and said, Sir, see that you're from Michigan. I said, Yes, sir. What brings you down here? I'm, the, I'm now the new youth pastor at New Pilgrim Baptist Church, the historical New Pilgrim in Birmingham. He said, Oh, are you a preacher? I said, Yes, sir. He said, I see your cross. So, Yes, sir. He said, How much do you love Jesus? I said, With all my heart. He said, I love Jesus too. And he asked me something. He says, 
how do you know you're saved? I said, I, John, 5 and 14, for this I know that I'm saved because I have passed from death unto life. And I got love for the brethren. He hit that gavel and said, your case is dismissed. I'm trying to tell you, when you love God enough, you got to have enough Jesus in you that though you mess up, he'll pick you up. I need my old saints here. I've been young, and now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, his seed begging for bread. David said that many people are starving, but I ain't never been hungry. Many people are living under the bridge, but yet God still make a way out of no way. And I'm just trying to find my crowd to know that the Lord will order your steps. And I'm just looking for five folks. And I'll make six that know that the Lord been ordering your steps for a mighty long time. People may walk away from you, but long keep on ordering my steps. Notice what David said. David is talking to young Solomon. He says, son, I messed up. I messed up with Bathsheba. I messed up with some other things. But God bestowed this blessing upon you. And since God bestowed it upon you, I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I made. And I'm just looking for some saints of God that don't mind telling the next generation, don't go down this road. Make sure you're in the ark of safety. Make sure you're in God's hands because when you're in God's hand it's better than all state when you're in God's hand it's better than state farm when you're in God's hand it's better than progressive when you're in God's hand you got some blessed assurance when you're in God's hand. You got blessed assurance. Not only do you got blessed assurance, but you are heir of salvation. Anybody here know something about being saved? Anybody here know something about having the love of Jesus? Well, Johnson, how you gonna get to Calvary? Look what it says. He fought. But he's not utterly cast down for the Lord restores him with his hand. How do you mean? It means everything that I've done wrong, the Lord restored it. Everything that I said that I shouldn't have said, the Lord restored it. Everything, every place that I went that I shouldn't have went, the Lord restored it. Well, how did it restore it? Well, let me tell you how God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came down through 42 generations. Born in a little town. Wrapped in swallowed his clothes. Went around healing the sick. Went around giving sight to the blind. Went around raising the dead. But he said there's a preacher who I called when he's in his mother's womb. There's a preacher that's going to be born in Ypsilanti. Reared up in Ypsilanti at the age of 27. Moved to Birmingham. Then at the age of 34. Moved to Lynette, Alabama. And I need, I need to restore him I need to magnify. I need for him to lift me up. So what I got to do, I got to die. I 
got to die. I wish I knew the Bible. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. What you're saying, Johnson, before I was born, he died. Before you were born, he died. He died till the sun went down. He died till the moon went down in blood. He died till the earth began to reel and rock. He died. Anybody here know he died? He died till the sword said, surely this must be, this got to be the son of man. He died. Anybody here know he died? Big mama said, he died. My granddaddy said, he died. My pastor said, he died. And now I'm saying, he died. But he didn't. He didn't. He didn't stay dead early. Early, early, oh shucks, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. The reason why I can walk right, cause he died. The reason why I can love right, cause he got up. The reason why I love my enemies, cause he died. The reason why I'm covered, he got up. The reason why I act this way, cause it died. The reason why I shout, he got up with all power in his hands. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Say it, say it, say it. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? So say it. Order my steps in your word. I'm learning how to trust them. I'm learning how to be patient. Now, beloved, this ain't a show. I told y'all God had been wrestling with me this week came to the church on Friday Miss Sin and Sister Nellums was here and Miss Sin thought I was joking when I said y'all need to tarry in there a little while longer she didn't know that I was telling her get in there and call my name because I've been wrestling with God all this week there, there's seven people in here. I'm the seven. There's six of y'all who've been asking God to order your steps. Yeah, it's, it's, it may be more than seven, but that's what God has been showing me in my dreams. Every He's been waking me up every morning except for Friday morning. At three o'clock in the morning, he's been waking me up. But at Friday, uh, Saturday morning, he woke me up at 3.45 and said, I need to talk to you. I had already written out my sermon, called my daddy, said I need to talk to you. And so yesterday I spent some time with some preachers. God said, I, I need to talk to you. So there's six of y'all. This, 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 this ain't invitation to Christ. It's six of y'all who's struggling with something that you want God to order your steps now this is what I've been holding back I have the gift of laying on hands but I haven't been doing it because them Baptist folks we don't do all that over here and God wrestled with me all this week he said if you don't start doing it I'm going to take it away from you So, so if you know that you are wrestling with God about your steps 
meet me at the altar because God told me to put some oil on you. I'm the seventh one. I'll tell you right now. I'm God, where's the church going now? God, everybody ain't coming back to church. How are we going to do it? I'm going to order your steps. God, they may not understand what being back the cost of is. God says, if you just walk, I'll fill them with the same spirit. Okay, y'all missed it. In the book of Numbers, Moses complained to God about the people that he had to pass. God said to Moses, look at them same people and make them leaders and I'm going to put my spirit in you and your spirit on them. So the same ones who complained and murmured about Moses when Moses made them leaders they got Moses' spirit on them. So they couldn't complain no more. They had to walk in the Shekinah glory. Come on, it's six of y'all. I, I know you're scared. I know you're scared. But it's six of y'all that's wrestling with God that you want him to order your say, I see one. I see. There's six. There's two. You're wrestling with God. I, I told you, God, God is a man that he should not lie. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, I don't know what y'all wrestling with, but I told y'all what mine was. Where are we going from here? God, I, I, I've been doing this virtual thing, God. I, they coming back, God. They're they going to want to have church anniversary. They're going to want to have this, God. They're going to want to have that. He said, I'll just. Well, he's moving too fast. We, sh we shouldn't be doing that yet. God said, if you just. I order your steps.
there's one more on this side the spirit is pulling me there's one more on this side Go back to your seat shouting that whatever God is getting ready to do. To fulfill, if you order my steps, I'll praise your name. Talk, show me how to talk in your word. In your word. Uh -uh. In your word. In your word. In your word. In your word. Guide my feet. In your word. Wash my heart in your word. In your word. Oh, show me how to walk in your word. Show me how to talk in your word. When I need a brand new song to sing.
this and there might be somebody here who's unchurched who's out of the ark of safety of God we want to give you that opportunity somebody here might want to rededicate themselves to God the doors of the church are open we're standing we're praying that God is going to move please Can you show me how to walk? Show me how to walk. Show me how to talk. Show me how to live. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Reverend Johnson, we have Sister Rosalind. Help my son who would like to rededicate her life to the Lord. Come on. I don't know who who sang this song. I think y'all singing this. It simply says, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. That's your song, Sister Gwen. I don't mind. Oh, I don't mind. I don't mind I don't mind On you Lord Lord I don't mind I don't mind Don't Come on, man, help her. I don't mind. I don't, don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Hold you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Come on, Sister Martin.
One more time, I don't mind waiting. That's, that's my testimony that I don't mind waiting. But God, in my waiting, you got to show me something. I told y'all I struggled this week. No, John T. Woody, everybody think that when you struggle, you must have sinned or you messed up. No, I struggle with today. Because God has showed me this moment this week. No, 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 I did not see who was going to join. I struggled because I know some people can't handle the oil. So I got to get you Bible, James chapter 5. 13, 14, 15 says, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him or her anointing him or her with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and if he have committed sin they shall be forgiven him that's Bible but I understand that a lot of us are in the third gear. Some might be still in seventh gear. But I'm in the twelfth gear. And I got to move when he say move. So it was my prayer this morning. I, I, I promise y'all, I tossed and turned all night long. Say, God, if I do this, you got to make a promise to me that you're going to show them that it's not me. Because I've learned this, Earl, I learned when people don't understand stuff, they say it's spooky. It don't take all that. But I believe the Bible. And I believe God that if you showed it to me you're going to make it manifest. So I wrestled this week. So God, you, you sure you want me to do that at that church? He said, didn't I place you at that church? I said, God, but, but you know, he said, those who are going to be there that Sunday 
are going to flow with you. And I'm going to show you the evidence. And here's the evidence. I, you know, she's rededicated. I thought she was already, but she's coming to rededicate. Ain't none of y'all business. Why you want to rededicate? Some of y'all need to rededicate every Sunday. But this is the evidence. Somebody asked me this week, does God really speak to you? Here's the evidence. How do God speak to you? Through his word. And then when I'm asleep, he wakes me up with visions and dreams. You'd be surprised when day I had to learn to uh, not respond to inboxes because you know when you if you get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and you may be scrolling on Facebook you get them inboxes why you up none of your business talking to God and I thank you God for showing me evidence I'm not even going to ask you because I know you love Jesus. And I know that he has done so much for you. So let me say, may we help you, never hurt you, build you up, and never tear you down. And the people of God said, I can't hear. I still can't hear. Amen. Welcome. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. Oh, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind. Amen. Come on, brother. On you, Lord. Oh, pray while waiting. Pray while waiting. Pray while waiting. On you, Lord. Oh, I pray. Pray while waiting. Pray while waiting. Pray while waiting. And the people of God said, Amen. Listen, listen. Did we decide on what we're going to do about Sunday school next week? Okay, Sunday school is canceled. Angela, you got me? Sunday school going to be canceled. Ladies and gentlemen, please get here like 9.45 if you want a seat because we got a preacher that is far none. Amen. We got a preacher who's going to break unto us the bread of life and I'm just happy that he agreed to come and close out this birthday celebration with me. Amen. 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 Shepherd's Care is coming at this time. Mr. Earl E.J. Johnson, come on down. Amen. Okay. That means you're going to leave with a heavy load, EJ. I would like to start off saying happy Father's Day again to all the fathers in the house. My papa over there had the Father's Day. EJ, uh, we're going to miss you, EJ. But God, moving you forward with your talent. We thank you for.
or being there for pastor, helping pastor with the equipment, using your talent God blessed you with. If you could have stayed back there on that good time, we wouldn't have never knew. But all that's instilled in you through Christ, our Lord and Savior. Wherever, Florida, they're getting a good man. Just a quiet man, y'all. A quiet man. And I'm sure there's a church waiting on you there, too. Okay, we love you. You don't say much, but we love you. From Pastor Johnson and the Shepherd Kev, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you. We're going to miss you. We're going to keep up with you on Facebook. But will the choir please stand? Because all the choir members, not just the ones when we was a choir before Corona, will y'all all please stand? Will my hammer please stand? And let's give EJ a hand of praise. You did more than any man would do. Because you could have kept that in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a safe trip. And tell your kids we love them too. This time, this heavy. You in your truck. <laughs> it's heavy, EJ. Hey. We love you, EJ. We're going to miss you. I got you. Any, any words, man? You can sit there right there. Is it on? Yeah. All right. Um, uh, yeah, I'm quiet. Not a person of many words. Uh, Y'all see me around and stuff and hear me sometimes, I guess. Uh, I will say this, uh, Pastor. <laughs> he's uh, through my hard times. He's been there for me. I really thank you for everything that you've done for me, giving me this opportunity. As far as now, I remember, I miss y'all. Michelle a lot. Um, I enjoyed this three years or so being here. It was a great time. I learned a lot. And thank y'all for everything that y'all have done for me as well. God bless y'all. Amen. 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 Let's, let's show him some love. Amen. The bucket that Brother <clears throat> Henry Goss is holding would be for Brother EJ. If you just want to show some love, you don't have to. Amen. He is indeed has become a friend and a brother. Amen. So let's just keep up with him. Show him some love. Amen. Father, we ask that you bless this offering as only you can. Bless those who had and those who had not. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling to present you faultless to the only wise God be dominion power both now and forever and the people of God said amen 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 starting from the rear